All right, let's get to these running backs. We're going to go, we'll start with Cook um, and your thoughts on that. Is that a guy that you, you feel comfortable taking in the first round? Yeah, Cook right now, I've got him at the end of the first round. Um, I've got him at uh, 111. I've got him right ahead of Alec Pierce. Um, and a lot of that comes down. Cook is probably, if I were to look at my rankings and adjust them before the draft and after the draft, He's been the highest riser for me. And this is not just like a CEH situation where, okay, he goes to Buffalo and we're all overcorrecting. Um, that's not the case for me with Cook. What it comes down to is this team is telling you, okay, we didn't draft him in the third or fourth round. We drafted him in the freaking second round. And you also have a backfield with Devin Singletary, who's going to be on the outs. He's a free agent after this season. Mm -hmm. um, and this team has wanted somebody that can play in the passing attack. They, I mean, they, they've told us with, with the moves, but it's also been they've told us this because Devin Singletary has been legitimately bad in the passing attack. Like his yards per route run were terrible. He's not a good pass protector. Um, so I've come up a lot on Cook. Um, I'm not over the moon for him, but I think considering this class and the draft capital that Buffalo invested in him. Yeah, I mean, I'll take the shot at, at, at the 111, 112. He's not probably leaving the first round for me. And. I understand that Buffalo talked about have him as like a sub back. And I, and I get that the other layer of context that we need to sit here and marry with that is like, okay, people are like, well, what if he's just the passing down back? He's the passing. If he's the, if he dominates the passing work. Okay. And, and just say he gets five to eight carries a game. He's dominating the passing downs on a team that's throwing at a top three clip in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're legit throwing on 64% of their snaps in close games. So this is not a team that like we're like, oh, well, you know, his snap rate might be nee, because they, they don't throw a ton. Right. This team has shown us like in the playoffs, they were like, we don't need to run the damn ball. We're just going to throw the damn thing like that. We need to also factor that in when we're talking about James Cook. Yeah. I'm 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 a little on the fence with Cook. I I kind of want to I kind of want to be in, but I'm 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 a little uh, the ADP is is kind of what's I don't know for whatever reason if he was in the second round I'd be in, and I just maybe it's just a mental thing that I need to get over. But it just seems like 110, 111, 112 is is sort it's, of it's hot. It seems a little it is. hot, but it but is. like you said, there, there, there's some good some really good points in there. He's on a good offense that passes the ball a lot, and there's you know uh, you know I believe they said it. The bills that the, or somebody I forget who said it, but there's a difference uh, between being their general manager. Yeah, a, a difference between having a guy who can you know, be a weapon in the passing game and and you mm -hmm. know run a couple basic things out of the backfield, which you know I would assume that if you're not like I think personally that the Buffalo Bills need to actually line up and run the ball a little bit more, somewhat for Josh Allen's uh, preservation, preservation, um, and somewhat just you know. Because it seemed like at times when they did get Singletary rolling a little bit, that he could be a factor in the running game um, down the stretch a little bit there. Um, and I, but, I think he was like RB3 over the last six weeks or something of the season. I mean, my thing about James Cook is the, the upside play with him. Mm -hmm. you, you look at uh, the downside of him. Okay, he's just a passing down back. The upside play with him is he operates in the Devin Singletary role of last year. Like, that could happen. Like, they... They had no qualms about dusting Zach Moss's ass last year and playing freaking Matt Breida. Mm -hmm. Can we really say that like Devin Singletary couldn't get the same treatment? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I could. It's possible. Sure. And the Capitals awesome. The the thing about with James Cook, I was I just, so surprised he went in the second round. I didn't see that shit coming. Well, I said it, it wrong. I said B Bucky Brooks last week. I meant to say Bucky Brooks. Right? He said mm -hmm. that the NFL. Draft is a beauty contest, right? And James Cook is, is beautiful because of those genes, right? And I've also heard, like, if he put on 10 pounds of weight, like, it, that's that's a tough thing to do, right? He is a little undersized to, to, to carry a load. He isn't Dalvin Cook. He is faster than Dalvin Cook. And then you talk about the receiving, and, and there's, like, there is a lot of upside there. But, I mean, when you look at the numbers, he only had 27 receptions in 21, only had 23 pass-blocking snaps, only 22 snaps in the slot, which is good for 11 percent that's not very much you know like it's not like you can just say he's gonna go dominate in the slot I, it's not like we've seen him dominate in the slot he wasn't used as much as the perception of what he was 
on paper, you know, and and mm-hmm. I get that there's a lot of other backs there, and it's Georgia, and they they do have a stable and a ton of dudes that are fucking talented as shit. Um, so there's a lot of competition, but it's just like it feels like we're hand. It feels it, it's it's a fun swing. It's another fun swing. It's a lot of upside. Good ceiling. Good genes. Probably helps out the fact that everybody loves him is also going to weigh into this. You know, he does. I, I didn't love him coming into the process. Yeah, uh, he was really, really low, and he was consistently back of the second, early third, kind of. Yeah, pre pre draft, right? But but like Kuiper had him as his third running back, or maybe even second or something. Like a lot of the guys. Some, I mean, he was. I didn't. He he, <laughs> he, he, he was people, like my RB seven or eight or something like that. Now he's like my RB four, but I think that. Honestly, that tells you more about this class than I think it does about James Cook as well. You know, so I think the, the there's a steep, steep drop off. And every, we all know that Like there's a steep drop off after the two, the top two guys. But I think a lot of that has to do with with the state of this class, too. I guess my point to the listeners and, and the viewers is, is, you know, when taking James Cook, you don't don't feel 100 percent confident. You know what I mean? Like they're. <laughs> yeah. You can't just feel like you knocked it out of the park. You need to come with some reservation that this might not work out because it's just – it seems like a bit of a fugazi because it's like he's the greatest pass catching back we've ever seen is almost like the narrative you hear and you look at it. Yeah. There's not that much to back up that take. Which I mean, is, but, you know, when you do see him operate – He busted off a nice run in the championship game and it was like, oh, shit, who's that? That's Dallas yeah. Cook's brother? I didn't – when you see him operate, well, and in if the we're going to go to game. hot takes, I, I'll, I'll say this: I think Damian Pierce is a better receiving back than than James Cook. Yeah, I mean, so I would, I would have, I wouldn't have mind seeing Damian. Can't be Pierce that many receptions there. for Damian Pierce either that you can really look. Nah, at, but right? those hands are super soft. Which no, but if you look at Damian Pierce, he he did play uh, over his career at Florida. He played in the slot or out wide on twenty three percent of his snaps. And he had he had seasons at Florida where he got into the thirty percent range where he played in the slot or outside. Yeah. All right, we got one more guy, Rashad White, kind of same vein a little bit. I think he's got super soft hands for uh, what he is. Pretty pretty decent pass catcher. Uh, maybe a better, maybe even a better pass catcher than than Cook. Um, what do you, what are your thoughts here? A lot of first round. Uh, you know, I, I've seen some. Plenty of drafts where he's already gone in the first round. Is that is that somewhere? I'm not taking some, him in the first round. He went in the first round in the in the draft we just did. I wouldn't. I did not. I'm, I'm it's not, not for me. No. So that's that's out for you. You're, where? Well, so and I, and I'll say this, and we're we're talking about range of outcomes with guys. Do I like a lot of the things that Rashad White does? Yes. Is he a weapon in the passing game? Yes. Is he super elusive? No. No, he tested better than I thought he was going to. But if you look at him as a rusher, I, from a rushing standpoint, he has an upright running style and he has really stiff hips. He he doesn't. I don't look at him as being somebody that's going to be able to create as well on his own. Um, is that a detriment or a, a, a coffin nail? No. But what it could be a coffin nail, and I don't know if people are weighing this in as much. Okay, is. Rashad White landed in Tampa. That's great. That's grand. Okay. Yay. Tom Brady. Good offense. All this type of stuff. You also just had Uncle Lynn who just got re-signed to a three-year deal. Right. That's like, what I don't understand. L- Leonard Fournette could legitimately be like, it's not crazy. He could be there for the next three seasons. Right. If he is, you just ate up almost all of his rookie deal. Right. So I love that you call him Uncle Lynn. We call him Uncle Lenny. (laughs) That's right there. (laughs) Just never heard that before. (laughs) Um, And that's really what I come back. Like that's why I have Rashad White bumped down in my ranks. Like he's in the middle of the second round because there's a range of outcomes where he doesn't see the damn field, and he's the next AJ Dillon. Where it's like, well, what if he got the backfield? Okay, but or the next Keyshawn. He doesn't. Yeah, he could. I mean, like, this team is another one that's shown us that, like... I think he's better than Keyshawn Vaughn, but... I think he's better than Keyshawn Vaughn. I'm just a Keyshawn Vaughn hater for whatever reason. Well, I I, I like Keyshawn Vaughn coming out. I didn't love Keyshawn Vaughn, but the other part of that is he's very very comparable to Keyshawn Vaughn because he's not a young prospect. Keyshawn Vaughn was 23 23 when he came out. The same thing as Rashad White. So you're looking at him... 
Simmons is old. You're looking at like if he sits behind Uncle Lynn for three years, he's 26. Mm-hmm. He's you, coming out of his first contract as a rookie. He's gonna be 27. You know, lots of like, people go to college for seven years. <laughs> yeah, they're called doctors yeah. or lawyers. Um, so you know, like it's it's concerning. Like I see both sides of the coin for Rashad White. Like, could he be great? Sure, he could be really good. Um, could he also sit behind Leonard Fournette for the next three seasons and not sniff the field? That's possible too. Yeah, but he's one injury away from dominating that backfield. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I I agree. Rashad's got to get pushed down for me, but I'm I'm hoping that he stays up because he's a guy that I'm not taking and pushes another another person. Right. Down, when so. when when someone took him at 112 in the UDPL and we're in the early two, it was like I fantastic. We just got somebody good else fell to us. So right. Right. I I. I I can't, I can't take him in the first round, no, like no, over no way. Just, like Lenny's second no round way, wide man. receivers Lenny's that just, have. Lenny's just been too good in all phases of the game, and really just, elevated that, his receiving game. And like I just, I, I mean, like they re-signed him and they used him as a workhorse last year. You know, like right. even in the best case scenarios, like if Leonard Fournette stays there for three years, and like I talked about it, like Rashad White is just like this year's kind of AJ Dillon. It's like he could be kiboshed for three years. Like mm-hmm. that's what happens with AJ, AJ Dillon. Like, okay, cool. Like that's great and grand. He's still a committee back, and he's a lot of times he's on the wrong side of it. Mm-hmm. So Tony, Pollard. you know, it's like, you know, hey, there you go. It's like no matter how bad we want certain players to play, the NFL is still going to do what the NFL wants to do. And right. for all fantasy people, you could scream at your television every single week and say, ah, play Tony Ballard. And yeah. Jerry Jones is like, screw all you guys. Like I'm still going to play Ezekiel if he's healthy. doesn't yeah. matter. I don't care. Got to. All right, man. Well, we really appreciate you sticking around. Thank you for the marathon. I know, we, man. We went longer than than when we anticipated, but I we, didn't, we got down a couple uh, sidebars, and uh, you know, you, I didn't think that draft capital conversation would t- take like fifty minutes. Some of it was your that. fault. Some of it was your fault. <laughs> oh, I mean, I talked a shit ton. I told y'all that was going to happen. That's why I, I don't try to book a lot of the uh, uh, these kind of things with a time frame because a lot the hard of hard outs I, are no fun. I, I get on a, no they're not. I got hard um, I out get at on, nine. I'm like ah. Oh, I get it, I get tangents and stuff like yeah. that, and you know we get down rabbit holes yeah, and yeah. and you know at the end of the day we all have our convictions and and how we approach dynasty sure. and it's it's just good talking points, man. Yeah, well I, I really appreciated your point of view and and talking to you. We, we obviously we do a lot of this by ourselves, and I just like to get other people on the show to to just should tell our listeners how other people feel because you know we're we're telling them hey this is this is how we feel, but. It's nice to hear other people in the in the industry, especially who are as well renowned and respected as you are, to give us some time and your two cents. So again, really yeah, appreciate it. Can't appreciate can't can't say thank you enough. Really appreciate the time you gave us, man. Make sure you go follow Dro underscore FFB on the Twitters. Uh, he's all over the fantasy pros. Check out the articles. He's on the podcast. Man's everywhere. So uh, and, and including on our show. So we got him, and we appreciate you, buddy. Uh, any last words, hey, ma'am? Uh, no, thank y'all for having me. This was a blast. Um, two hour marathon, so people got plenty to listen to, whether they do yard work or just trying to zone out from life. Uh, wherever you go for podcasts. So, again, I, I really appreciate the time. Appreciate y'all having me. Um, and yeah, anytime y'all need somebody, just holler. If I got the time, I can make it happen. All right, right. well, stick around after we end the show. We got we want to talk to you about something real quick. Yeah, uh, absolutely. All right, well, <laughs> if you're listening on the on the podcast, hit us with the five star review, Spotify, iTunes for your pleasure. Hit your boys up. Uh, go to the RevelryBrewingCo.com to get the uh, the FF Dynasty T shirt. And if you're on the YouTube's, man, please let us get that subscribey. Uh, we appreciate y'all. We'll be back with uh, with mocks and fox and socks and all kind of stuff. So we'll we'll be back soon. We appreciate you. Peace. <laughs>